So that's going to move us to our top five. And starting our top five is going to be Team 314, made up of Simeon and Benjen, who created, in my opinion, one of the most creative robots in the field with a really cool four bar mechanism that extends to score mechanisms, or score ornaments, rather. Uh, Colton, can you start us off here? So, yeah, the that's definitely the first thing I saw. I was just like, what the heck is this? But And then when I looked more into it, it's, it's so cool. And <laughs> this is one of the ones that I want to see in real life, because I just want to see how well it works because i know it'll work well i just want to see see it on the field yeah definitely griffin how do you feel about this one i definitely feel like this was a really intricate one that i felt like if they do if done right it can do really well i think a problem is that since there's the kink between where the human human load in place and the uh what a uh, ground load in place sort of meet I feel like that might cause a possibility of a jam mid-match. Yep. And th- that can be a problem. Yep. Definitely be one of those things. I would wonder how well it would actually work, uh, that little break in the, the area. Uh, Parker, how do you feel? I liked it, too. I, I uh, didn't immediately recognize what was going to happen when I saw the first uh, the first kind of render, but while the CAD was still loading. And then I kind of just clicked, and I noticed what was going to happen. And, yeah, that was really cool. Um what I like about this robot is that it has a, a the, the, it was designed in a way that could feasibly be built. Um, the uh, scoring seemed robust and not really prone to, or it's not prone to defense, and it's very easy to, to align. Um, you, you have a visual kind of alignment where it goes right in, so so you can score uh, effectively. Um, and the CAD detail was there; like this was one of the uh, definitely like pretty much perfect CAD um, as yeah. far as I could tell. I really liked yeah. it. I think where this lost a couple points for me, at least, um, was the fact that they could only score in the top hole of the tree. Now, is this a problem? Perhaps not, um, because it is the highest scoring part of the tree. But I always like to see flexibility in robots. So limiting yourself to one part of the tree um, wasn't exactly what I wanted to see, especially with you know smaller robots that are shooting farther away from the tree. Maybe they get in the way of those. All right. Uh, I think that's going to move us to the fourth ranked team, which is team 295. Now, the renders aren't fully updated here, I don't believe so at least, um, but trust me, 295 cat is a really nice robot which can score ornaments with ease as well as take care of stars. The team consisting of Mia and Kevin created a robot that the judges think will be very effective in this year's game. Uh, Griffin, can you start us off? Yeah, I definitely like the fact that it was a stationary loaded and it was just simply load it up and push it out. There was nothing, cha- there was nothing mo- moving that was going on the elevator, it was just a simple... Uh, sort of like conveyor belt to push it out i think or one of the pro- problems would be is during loaded if you're not in the right position then you're going to have trouble getting the ball into the feeder and th- that just takes so much time away from uh, cycles yep definitely parker how do you feel what, uh, this robot was a total sleeper for me. Um, frankly, I can admit that I saw VersaFrame, I think it is, and it is all just kind of pretty much stock VersaFrame, and I thought, all right, this is going to be interesting. But they did a really good job of it. Um, yep. This They don't have a floor intake, I admit, but what was really clever is that they're, as a, in this picture right here, um, they're their same element that they use for loading ornaments in, they can basically slide the, f- the, f- the back floor toward the front and kind of just hold a star on those two pegs and then push it off uh, on top. It was a pretty clever way of using the same mechanism for both ornaments and stars. Um, and it was also take, it was very, it was taken to account that this should be easy to build and it would be, uh, this is definitely a far cry from the next three robots we're going to be seeing that would be a, really difficult to manufacture. This is something that you could build in your garage and would work really well, I think. Definitely. Cool. Any final comments? Uh, detail is amazing. In the one render, you can see the detail on the rivets that they have. Yeah. It's, I'm just, this one's really impressive. And they got their fifth point because they had their Spark Maxes. <laughs> yep. Nice. Yep. And uh, I think probably the part of this robot that really impressed me was just the integrated star um, topper. I think it was really yeah. well designed and just integrated very well all right that brings us to our top three the first robot in our top t is team 250 see team 250 is the only robot in the top three to score presents with a 2018-esque mechanism to take care of them and the team of chun shi and justin also catted a very impressive dumping mechanism which can very quickly score ornaments 
Uh, Parker, can you start us off here? Sure. Yeah. Um, this is a. It, there's a lot going on in this robot. All the systems individually were complex um, and took some time to 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 kind of get into, but everything was was robust and held up. Uh, they had a, a good elevator that was was solid. They had a great uh, present intake that was solid. Their uh, tilting hopper was also solid. Um, it was it was all really good, and um, the the detail was all there. Um, yeah. It's and oh yeah, there's the, the trophy. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> I <laughs> the uh, it, it was good. I liked it. Um, it's. I think the creativity was where it um, didn't really stand out as being super interesting. It was pretty much a three-ball hopper on a lift with a present intake. Um, yep. But it was good. I liked it. Yeah, and I think you know, we saw a lot of robots similar to this, and I think the reason why it's in number three is because it was the most well-executed version. Um, and Colton, how do you feel? So Parker pretty much said everything. Uh, I, the first time I saw this robot, it was my favorite until top team uh, <laughs> but it it's it's very well done and the i think my favorite part of it is the nas nasa, NASA. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a nice touch griffin any uh, final remarks i like basically they both said the, this basically the gist of what i was going to say it's like i think the one thing i would just add is just uh, and let unless like I unless that like hoppers re- light, that's gonna end up tipping if they get hit at the wrong time. Right. Yeah, no, that's definitely uh, something I, I noted. All right, but I think that brings us to our final two. Now I don't know how many people realize what's going on right now, um, but for people who are have participated in the last couple of catathons and have watched the last three catathon streams. Uh, there's been two teams that have really dominated the field, and that's been Team 157 and Team 62. I believe the past two catathons, 157 came in second place, and in the past three catathons, Team 62 came out with the crown. So I know they're very much sitting on the edge of their seats to see who is going to be number one this time. And for the first time in three catathons, Team 62 will not be at the top of the podium. This time consisting of Brian, Chris, and Max. However, they still catted a very impressive robot with an incredibly effective intake and shooter. They also included a slam dunk mechanism to top the tree. So, uh, Colton, will you uh, start us off for this one? So, yeah, this was a this is a very nice looking machine. It has the pneumatic wheels, so it can traverse the sleigh part and <laughs> the shooter, the uh, the angled lift. And their intake reminded me of 971's original 2016 intake. Yep. And, yeah. It was, it was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Griffin, how do you feel? I, I honestly felt like this was a very, very good bot. Like, I, I was confused a little bit for the slam dunk thing at first. But then once I saw it, once I, like, figured out what was going on, I was like, okay, yeah, this can, this can work. Uh, and just the fact that, and just everything works, everything right. works. And I think the reason why, the only reason why it got knocked off the top spot is because the first place team does everything better. Yep. Uh, Parker, uh, how do you feel about this one? Yeah, I liked it. There were pretty much the, my, my nitpicks are so minor. Uh, I think the slam dunk uh, score where the arm kind of intakes and then just flips over the top of the robot and uses inertia to keep the star in or kind of kind of uses inertia to keep the star in place and and tops it could work if the alignment is perfect on the first try uh, they didn't really have any way of really ensuring that though I didn't see anything that would be great there um, so if they miss it's it's game over unlike the next robot um, yep. also the uh, intake didn't have any gussets on it like there was a kind of different design style for that one or something like that and so there's some detail that was uncharacteristic of, of 62 there um and also i couldn't find a battery yeah oh. <laughs> there wasn't there i brian correct me if i'm wrong but none of us could find a battery on that robot yeah which, uh, which is hard to um hard use to, the robot yeah batteries are pretty big so and they also play a and big important. part of your weight so 
not designing in a battery um, is definitely a problem because it's really hard to find a place for a battery once a robot's already designed. Um, but for me, the reason why I chose uh, the next robot over this one was really just because of the star mechanism. I think this had a better shooter, honestly, um, but the slam dunk mechanism for me just wasn't nearly as good as Team 157. And speaking of Team 157, they are the winners for this one. Following a few second place finishes, Team 157 has finally taken the crap. The team consists of Rafi, Isaac, and Ramsey, and they created an incredibly elegant robot designed to shoot ornaments, as well as top the tree with a star for the end game. Parker, let's start us off. Sorry, have you start us off for this one? Uh, sure. Um, how do I start? Um, it it was, as far as we could tell, one of the best star scores, which, um, as it turns out, is very important. I think after it went through all the robots once and realized how few star scores there were. Um, and how important that would be in a meta game if this was actually a a, a competition. Um, we we gave a lot of uh, there is a lot of kind of creativity behind actually making one that works. Um, and then add a, a a floor and take into an elevator and a shooter that was I, I couldn't find anything wrong with it. Um, and and it had a battery. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It did have a battery. Um, which is very important. Griff, uh, Colton, how do you feel about this one? So this was a great robot. The uh, I remember them saying in Slack, they were talking about their intake, saying uh, how they copy-pasted from 971 2016, but uh, that was a joke. But <laughs> I, th- I thought that was funny. <laughs> and they had a nice drivetrain. I know that that's what Minotaur likes to do. So Yeah. And... Yeah, just yeah, it's just a great robot. Absolutely, Griffin. And also, uh, this, oh. uh, this was also the only robot I scored perfectly. Man, yep. I think I put on my scoring sheet. I scored them a nine in effectiveness, and I said if they had a mechanism for presence, this would have been perfect. So, yeah. I think that was my only great. Griffin, how do you feel? Uh, basically, everything is just good. Like the the, the shoot the shooter was amazing. I love the fact that. The star is just a light placer rather than the the uh, swing and pray of uh, the of the second place team, and also for the and also a little note that they added in um, their uh, scouting sheet was the fact that they used uh, they said they use mechanum wheels on the uh, on their intake to feed into basic in, smaller wheels that. Or so that way it would just feed into the center, yep. or or no, not basic the omnis. Yep, you know I thought that was really clever. But overall, I mean, I think he we could all agree one fifty seven did an incredible job of building their robot as they've done pretty much every time. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe.